This is where we're going to start. We're going to focus on one ABC first. We have a function here. P equals 4,000 times 1.031 to the T. This function works for the population of the United States from 1790 to 1860. In thousands, by the way. So 4,000 is actually 4 million, okay? Um, it's your job to say how many people were here. Whoopsie. 1970. Sorry. Sorry, 1790. How many people were here in 1790? And then 1860. So you're going to find out how many people are here using this function. Then you're going to look at the annual percentage increase from the function predicted by the model. And then... What is the prediction for 2017, and is that accurate? So we're just going to do one ABC to start. So let's take a look at these populations. Who can tell me how many people there were in the United States in 1790? Finn. Four million. How'd you know that? Yeah, that's our initial value since our function's from 1790, right? Okay. So 4,000 is four million. This function is 1790. Right, so initial value is how many people there were in 1790. Okay. So to get to 1860, how many years after this were, were there? Who can tell me? 70 years after, how many people were there? Uh, 33 million. Uh, or 33, oh, sorry, 3.3 3 million. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I guess I'm going to do the calculator. I'm going to do 4,000 times 1.031 to the... 30th. Oh, 70th. My bad. I got it. And I get this answer. 33897.4135. But this, I need to go three decimals to, or three to the right. So 33897.413. And a half people? You can't have half people, but. So 33.8 million people or so. So. It was like almost like eight times as many people in, in 70 years, right? That's another way we could look at that. Because oh. because our function is in, in thousands. So to get from thousands, out, to get it to be out of thousands, right? 4,000 thousands for a million. We go with that? So to get that thousand on there, three decimal moves, 10 times, 10 times, 10. Okay. So what's the annual percentage increase based on the model? How many percent is it going up each year, Tess? What's the percentage each year? 3.1%. And I can see that right here for my growth factor, right? Okay, so let's get a prediction for 2017, which is going to, this is going to be real fun. So how many years from 1790 to 2017? 227. 227. That's not an exponent you use every day. So 4,000 times 1.031 to the... 227 and I get 4090505780 so I'm converting I'm converting out of the thousands when I write this so the function would pump out something that's three decimals to the left so the four billion oh the what the function pumps out yep so uh, are there four billion people in the United States now so not accurate we have like. We have, we have about 330 million. We have close to 300 million. So Emmett's, Emmett's right on the ball. I'm speculating why the population growth was higher then. We didn't rely on birth rates early in our country. We relied on immigration. A lot of people moved here. I, I'm guessing. I, I'm not a. I, I'm not a historian. I'm not a social studies teacher, but I do know some stuff. So. This model did not work great for all that time, and likely, again, it's, it, it's not just based on birth rates. You could probably get a different function based on only birth rates, but those sometimes change too, right? I, I would guess people used to have more kids maybe than they do now in general, but I don't know. Yeah. Also, more kids used to, to pass earlier in life than now, so I don't know what the end result of that is, but there's a way you could math that if we had more information. So we next are going to look at number two. We're going to do number two together, so you can do number three on your own. What percent increase does the model predict each decade? So what's my growth factor regardless? One, yeah, 3.1%. In a decade, that would happen how many times? 10. 10 times. So to get a growth factor for the decade, I got 1.031 to the 10th. 
And so the model predicts something close to like 35.7% increase for 10 years, right? And that makes sense. The 30 years, do you remember the 30 years about tripled? Yeah. A third, a third, a third? Okay, just make it, make it a connection. So this is, this is close uh, to a decade. Now, we're gonna rewrite a function then for decades instead of years. Because that could be, that's just a different interval, right? And it can be equivalent. So my favorite way to do this is to do this. How many people are we starting with still in 1790? Four million, which we're gonna write as 4,000 thousands, okay? And I'm going to keep my growth rate of 1.031 and I'm gonna raise it to the 10. Because that's my decade, right? And then I'm gonna raise it to, did it give me a variable? D, for decades. So this is my personal favorite, and I'm gonna tell you why. I know we just established that 35.7% growth. Is that still in my function? Yes. Yeah, it's just there as 1.031 to the 10th. And then I'm not messing with some of the decimals, because there are other decimals. When I did the decade, I actually got 1.35702264, and I think there's more decimals. And we know as an exponential function, if we round somewhere, over time, our difference becomes bigger or bigger or smaller or smaller. Bigger. bigger and bigger. So it wouldn't be wrong, and I don't hate you know, seeing something like 4,000 times um, 1.357 to the, to the D each decade, right? Because this is pretty close to the growth rate for a decade. The one on the left is definitely going to be more accurate, though. Are you guys seeing the difference? Because one, one keeps all the decimal in it, the other rounds. Okay, but they're kind of the same. So your job next is to get a percent increase for a century and then write a function for a century. Let's go. Okay, guys, I was out there seeing some good stuff. Um, and there's still a little confusion, a couple places, more than one, about decimals to percentages. So let's check that out. So um, there's two ways we could have gone about this century. One way is going to be better than the other. My personal favorite way would be to take my one year and do it 100 times, okay? That'd be my personal favorite because it's, it's the most exact, right? I know 0 0.31 or 0 0.031, and I get this number. But this number is not the percentage, right? This number is the decimal, all right? Are you guys mean what I'm, are you guys catching what I'm laying down there? Okay, so. I stepped in. Oh, I stepped in. Okay. Okay. So this is pretty close. I want to say like 21, 2000. So here, here's one thing that's kind of tricky here. Okay. This, we used our 100% no change, right? So we do need to take 100% off to get our percentage of change. Okay. Let me say that again. We use the 100% to get this, so we need to take our 100% off to get a percent change. Everybody follow that? Yeah. So this isn't growth. Yeah. yeah okay. That's what I that's what I okay. So the percent increase would actually be close, close to 2018% instead of 21,018. Right? This, this, this is right here. This is not growth. That's just the stay the same. It's harder when it's in a big number. Right, like if you got 1.45, you know it went up 0.45, right? We don't use the one. Everybody follow that? Why well, we gotta take that 100% back off? The 100% is not growth, it's what was there. Yeah. Okay? Another thing you could do, um, yeah, that's, that's just what you'd have to do there. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point that out again, because I think it's hard to see in the big number. If up here, it was kind of easy, right? Up here we got, um, well, up here, 1.031. It's easy to see the change, right? It was one point, the, this pumped out 1.357. It's easy to see the 35.7%. We don't use the 100% that was there. Here it doesn't pop as much, right? Because we got more numbers. But this one right here, this 100%, that's not how much it changed by, that was what was already there. So this is actually what it changed by. Does everybody kind of, it's, it's harder to see, but it's still there. Another thing I want to point out, did anybody do um, the 1.357 to the 10th instead? 
So that kind of work, if you, if you did, you take one decade and do it 10 times. But remember, we rounded here, so your new factor wouldn't be as exact. I like to use the most exact factor I can. Well, you have a question? Um, so pretty much, if you wanted it to be simple, can you just multiply 0 plus 0 0 1 .0 to the power of 10, and that's a century, so it's 1 You can't just do the 0 0.031. Because that shows decay. You would get a smaller, smaller number because you're multiplying by a number less than one. So what you can try in your calculator. Your calculator would probably point oh three one to the hundredth. Yes, one point zero three one. No, that's what I did. One point zero three one to oh to the tenth to the tenth. No, just to the tenth, and that was one Yep. And then so that's one decade. We need a century now. So that then you'd have to do that to the tenth again. But we have to take 100% off the percentage we get because the 100% is this stay the same. That's not growth. So I'm just saying that's how we make the jump from here to here. And it is a challenge to see. How do you take the percent off? 100% off, which is one whole. We, you did it here too. Wait, so you just do 21? I took off the 100% where I drew the arrow. So again, I'm just going to point out that's hard to see when it's bigger than the one point stuff. I think at least. So we're going to go down and write a century model. Okay, so P equals, how many people do we start with again? No, we start with 4 million people. We're going to represent thousands. And I'm going to stick with the 1.031. And how many times are we going to do that for a century? 100 times per century. This would be the fun my favorite function. My less favorite function would be this one, 4,000 times. Now, we would go back to here. This is the growth factor. We'd have to add that 100% no change in for the growth factor. So 21.1, uh, let's say 8. This would be for one century. But this one isn't as good. The first one's better because we round in that second one. If we round in an exponential, so we get further and further away from the actual. Right. Okay. We're going to look at some interest stuff like yesterday next. You are going to match the statement with the expression. Okay. But be mindful. There is a statement actually that doesn't match an expression. And you're going to write the expression for that one. So make all the matches you can. When there's one left out, you're going to write the expression for that one. With your partner, let's go. Eyes up here, mouths closed. Okay, who's got a match for me? Grant? How do you know? Because 72 days? Okay, yeah, 72 days isn't bad. Well, it wouldn't be days. 72 what? 72 months. Months for six years. Is that true? Okay, that is true. Okay. Who's got another match for me? Test. So semi-annually happens twice a year. And twice a year for six years, how many times? Yep. So we're splitting our uh, nominal interest rate into two chunks and we're doing it 12 times over six years. And the last one. There's one more match here, Ellen. Uh, it goes with the one. Yep. So 12 to the six is the same thing as 72. This is saying one year for each month. One year six times is six years. So that means the bottom one is left out. And we need to write a function for it. So how much money are we starting with? A thousand. A thousand buckaroos. Okay. And what's my, I'm going to add to my 100%. What's happening to my 0.07? I'm splitting it. I'm dividing it into six equal chunks because it's every two months for a year. And then we have a couple of options here. We can do the double parentheses. I'm a single parentheses guy usually. So if it's twice... Sorry, if it's six times a year for six years, 36. that's 36 times it's going to compound. You could do a, a two to the six, two to the six thing. 
as well. But that's going to happen 36 times. Now, for all of these, what's the nominal percentage? Seven. But are the effective, is the effective percentage going to be the same annual? No. Because if it gets more times to compound, what happens? It gets bigger. So which one's going to be the biggest? Um, the f- top one and the bottom one. Yeah, the, the each month, right? That would end, the effective rate would end up being more. All right, let's get to our lesson summary. You got to show me to get the homework.